Hi, Dave Hefflinger, Superintendent of the Field Schools. Glad you're watching this. This is our fourth conversation with the principal. We have done the other three buildings previously. Today, we will be talking with Sean Bookman about Suffield Elementary. If you have not had an opportunity to watch the other three, I would encourage you to go back and do so. Good information from all the principals about what's happening in their buildings. A great way for you to stay informed about what's happening in each school in our district. Sean, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, talk with me first a little bit about, I know as we are in calendar year 2024, we are the 100th anniversary of Suffield School. Certainly not the building your principal in right now, but Suffield School. Talk about that a little bit. Yes, um, in 1924, Suffield School was opened on the same location that we're in right now. Um, we've been able to do some research. We actually have some grade books and things that go clear back to 19, actually pre prior to that, for some of the small little township schools that were around, the one-room schoolhouses. But started in 1924, we've got pictures of some of the first teachers and the first principal, Mr. Jenkins, in 1924. Um, it's been pretty cool to go back and look through that. So we're celebrating 100 years this year in 19, or 2024. We've got some events that have been planned this year, and they will roll into next year as well. That's great. And it's, uh, you know, when you think 100 years, 2024 as someone who used to teach history I guess I make those references and it makes me think I'm talking about right after World War One I. I mean to put this in context for people that is a long time ago so what all have you learned about the principles at the time and the transition to different buildings what have you learned so far well, we've done some research. Um, I I have been principal at Suffield for, this is my 25th year. How is that possible when you're 39 years old? I'm not really right? sure. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> but I will date myself in saying in 1974, Mr. Will, Mr. Welsh started as the principal. That was the year I started kindergarten. Um, he was there for 25 years also. And then I've taken over and I've been there for 25 years. So in, the, in 100 years, between the two of us, we were there 50 years. That's remarkable. I, I think so too. That, that really is, that's great. Even when I think about it, a quarter of a century there, wow. <laughs> that, that's an incredibly long time to be in mm -hmm. any district, let alone in the same position. That's, that really is incredible. It's a testament to everything you've done. Well, thanks, I think it's a testament to the community and the people in the district and the students. I, it's, a, it's a great place to be, it's a great school to work in and we just have a great community, and maybe that's why there's been longevity over the last couple of years, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we're, we are researching and trying to find out the other principals. I know my grandfather, Harold Pullen, was there for a short time uh, back in the 50s, early 60s. He was the first principal then here at Field High School in, I think it was 1961. So um, we've also found there was a Mr. Gregory. We're trying to get his exact dates. But we're looking those up so if anybody out there watching us knows of any dates, we'd love to have some names and we can try to find those in our records. Um, so we're, we're working on that. That's fantastic. Yeah. That really is. Talk a little bit about the culture of Suffolk. Well, I think, um, I think we know from our community that we have awesome students. Um, the students at our school, the, the approach we've tried to take is it's not my school, it's not, the, it's not the teacher's school, the school belongs to the kids and we really take that into consideration as we do things throughout the school. Uh, we have um, sort of like a mini student council, it's called our student lighthouse team and they do some activities in the school. Um, right now they're doing some things where they are working with some of our students with multiple disabilities and partnering with them and doing some fun activities to include them in um, other aspects and parts of the school. They are, um, all the students participate in something that we call lead groups. And with the lead groups, we have students from K to five who choose an area of interest for example, Mrs. Baker teaches a class that has a 3D printer in it, and we have some students who really like sports, so they might be doing agility. We have art, we have clay kids, we've got some sign language going on, kids who just like to do hands-on activities and build, or maybe they like to play board games. So we have these activities that students can sign up for. And when they sign up for these groups, 
they have kindergartners clear up through fifth graders in that group so they all get to know each other and then they see each other throughout the day it kind of creates more cohesiveness for this whole entire school where we just aren't fifth graders and we only know fifth grade teachers or we aren't just kindergartners and no kindergarten teachers they know other teachers they know other students there's other people in the building that they get familiar with and that helps them feel safe and secure allows them to interact with each other and they just really feel that sense of this is my school and these are all my all of my peers not just my same grade. And, and certainly throughout the day, there's a, a lot of the day where kids are, are grouped within their grade level. But on the opportunities they have then to be with intermixing with other grades, do you find that those relationships carry over? Yes, yes. They will see each other out at the playground occasionally or when we're in assemblies, going out to buses, sometimes in the lunchroom. So it's just really nice and they'll even point out, I hear from families like out in the community, they'll run into somebody that they see like in the grocery store and they'll point out, he's in my lead group. And we only do those once a month, but it is once a month opportunity where they get that uh, chance to interact. So right. it's kind of neat that they can point out and they know those older students and they act as role models. It's sure. very nice. Do you have a set time like lead groups are the third Friday of every month or something like that or no? Well, we've tried to put them on a Friday <laughs> afternoon, but it seems like there's always something that gets in the way, so we have to make a change. Maybe it's not the third Friday, but now it's the second Friday, or we try to make adjustments if we can. Um, also, right before we go into those lead groups, we do something that's called a celebration day, where we bring all the students together in the gymnasium and we celebrate each other. So all the staff will come up and talk about a student or a group of students in their class that they want to celebrate. But students also have the opportunity to celebrate themselves or others. If they have something or they know of something else that someone needs celebrated, they can fill out a little form and they turn it into the office and then we announce those. I've even had students lead that celebration assembly and that's been really fun to get them to come up and, and take part in that. They love it, love that. They also lead us some of our assemblies, like our Veterans Day assembly and some of the other assemblies that we might have. We really try to put them in charge, give them leadership roles, speaking roles, they do our announcements. They, they like to take charge. <laughs> it, it is always uh, fun I, when I'm down there for assemblies and events to see the students take charge and to see them speak. And uh, I think they do a remarkable job and it, it is not something we see in every school. Mm -hmm. They, it's fantastic and it gives them experience that will benefit them throughout the rest of school and throughout life. It, it sure will. Absolutely. So Dr. Flowers, when she was here, talked a little bit about the science of reading. How, how is that going in suffering? I think it's going great. We uh, really enjoy that having that. It's a great um, concept, but I, I feel like we have, we've already been doing it. Um, yes. We didn't have to wait for legislation to be passed. So I'm very proud of that. We're ahead of the ball game. We, um, our students uh, are really deep into phonics and phonetic awareness, and I think it's really making a big difference in our as, In 25 years you've been the principal there, so you have seen trends come and go and, and how we teach things change over time. Mm -hmm. Put the uh, science of reading in a kind of a long arc perspective of your time as principal. You think this is for what you've seen, this is the most efficient, effective way to teach reading. It's better than what we were doing, say, 10 or 15 years ago. Yes. Before we were using the three cueing method, um, and we found that that's just not working for students to learn how to read. It's, uh, basically, kind of like looking at pictures and looking at the first sounds and not really understanding the full language and all of this, the um, rules that go with the English language. And I hear people all the time say, oh, English is so tricky, and there's so many exceptions to the rule. But once you know all the rules, there really aren't a lot of exceptions because there's a rule as to why that thing didn't work the first time. So we're, uh, the kids are, they amaze me at what they know and the language that they're using to tell me about the types of syllables and words and things like that. They are, they are learning those and they can apply it. Uh, it brings me back to my days of learning how to read because I remember hanging above in Mrs. Hoskins' first grade classroom all my little puppets that we had to cut out and make that were like the hen that said the eh sound for e and, and we're back to learning phonics like when I learned how to read. So I think it's come full circle. And it is the core of every single subject. I mean, once you have reading, 
you are able to learn science, you're able to apply math, you're able to learn history and everything else. And without reading, all of those things can come to a stop. Absolutely. So, anything else going on at Suffield? Well, with our 100 years, we've got some, some fun things. Today, we're doing a 100-year tree planting. Oh, very good. Back in... Probably not today when you see this, but that's okay. <laughs> Today's Earth Day when we're recording, and so we're going to plant the tree today. We chose the Japanese red maple tree because if you look back on the historic pictures of Suffield, there were two Japanese maples that were right out front of the front entrance. Okay. And we decided we wanted to plant one of those to kind of commemorate the 100 years. So we're planting one of those today. Um, we're going to start a ribbon campaign. So you'll be seeing information that will be coming out about the ribbon campaign. We're getting a red ribbon, and we are going to pass them out to families that live in Suffield who have attended Suffield. So if you live at, in Suffield and you go to Suffield Elementary, you'll get a ribbon. If you ever attended Suffield School, you can request a ribbon, and we'll try to get one too. You can stop by the school. I think we're going to have them at Suffield Elementary, the high school and the middle school. Okay. Uh, we may be having them available at the Memorial Day Parade. And we're asking families to represent that they were former Suffield students by tying them around either their mailbox or a tree in their front yard oh, to sim symbolize um, Suffield School and I'm a Falcon. Um, and then we are planning tentatively August 31st, the uh, football game at, at the high school stadium, bringing back all the retired staff that we can find and setting up an area uh, off to the side where they can all gather and that people who come to the football games can come and see their old art teacher or whoever they, you know, whoever we can get to come, but they can reconnect with some of those staff members that they might have had over the years. Oh, so kind of a way to tie that in. So those are two of the things that we're working on. So if, if anyone out there who's listening has uh, attended Southfield School, make sure you get a ribbon for your tree. Very good. Very good. Well, I appreciate your time very much. Thank you for sharing everything that's going on in Southfield. Uh, hopefully you have enjoyed this and you have enjoyed all of them. Uh, we will do these again next school year and bring you updates on each building. I'll be back with you in May for some updates on the end of the school year. Until then, we appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.